All right. So welcome, everybody. This week's class, Crypto Mastery. And uh, well, what a big week in the markets. Bitcoin surging well past the 32K level we've been watching and then validating that head and shoulders pattern that we've been keeping an eye on for weeks. So just to uh, revisit that, you know, we were looking at this upward trending channel. Uh, would we stay in the upward trending channel or do we have a head and shoulders pattern playing out? And so previously had this arrow as a possible scenario. And uh, in and so now what we see here, the head and shoulders has been invalidated with this break up above 32K. So we'll come back to this and why it's such an important zone. But that was the line in the sand we were waiting for. And I did say and have been saying this could happen quickly uh, with the ETF news. And uh, of course, didn't see, didn't expect to see that so quickly. Although I did post yesterday, the day before yesterday, actually, that the ETF may come as early as January, if not sooner. And the the false news that we had that pumped originally was from Cointelegraph. Uh, Mark Yusko had a great uh, video online where he said, hey, they weren't wrong, they were just early. So that was a little clue that this thing may still happen. And it looks like that's the case, although it hasn't been confirmed by the SEC yet. So we're seeing some pullback here on this, but the key is we've now broken back above that uh, 30, uh, sorry, the 32K level, and I'm looking for the EMAs on this. So uh, we'll look at those as well. But this key level, we've closed now above it. So that's really the key on that. Uh, EMAs, exponential moving average is pushing higher. And uh, that'll act as support along with this upper level here. So um, here's that right shoulder pattern that uh, has now been invalidated. So where are we now? We're really more toward that uh, bull flag pattern that we'll look at in a moment. So we'll come back to the charts. I want to, and of course, look at our indicators and what they're telling us. And uh, first, I want to unpack some news. And uh, CNBC, uh, they always ask you for your ad blocker to turn off. So we'll skip that and we'll just go back and in case ha people haven't heard, you know, why Bitcoin is surging. Again, it's that ETF news that uh, was dribbled out. Apparently the ticker for the BlackRock ETF appeared on, and I'm going to get it wrong, the uh, DITCC or something. It's a, it's a, it's a, the, here is the DTCC basically says that, um, um, you know, it doesn't mean the fund has been approved or launched, but they've given it a ticker, which is usually the precursor of getting the ETF. And uh, also the SEC recently ruled, I was Monday saying, hey, we need you guys to make a decision. So they're forcing the hand of the SEC. And uh, so that's uh, likely coming. You know, we've had a lot of signals here and when it happens. So just look at what happened last night. Bitcoin surged to 35K twice and uh, sold off a little bit. But uh, that's just a prelude to what is coming when they do finally prove the SEC or approve the first uh, Bitcoin spot ETF. And I don't know, Mark Yuska thinks that BlackRock will be the only one approved. Maybe initially that's true. I think they would uh, certainly have to uh, come around and approve more of those over time. But even having one and seeing billions, if not trillions of dollars coming into this market, uh, there are, I've seen examples in, you know, some very smart people saying and suggesting that the amount of money that would come in at that point could push the uh, market cap, even just the Bitcoin market cap to 10 trillion over the next uh, few years. So we really want to be paying attention here. And uh, so let's see, uh, this person saying the rapid rises in Bitcoin are somewhat exaggerated. You know, this is certainly true and likely that people are trying to front run a bigger move higher. So we want to remain kind of cautious. You know, this won't be necessarily a straight rise up, although we will look at uh, a pattern that I was looking at yesterday, which could be very similar to that uh, rapid rise we saw in end of 2020 into 2021. So, um, you know, the headlines here, uh, we um, we can continue to unpack those, but um, uh, that's the big news, of course. Let's see, these ad blockers are uh, getting in the way, but Bitcoin soars a new 18 month high as ETF speculation mounts. And so we've kind of covered that. Uh, so 34K though, was, I didn't expect it to go that fast. Uh, that was a lot of fun to see that. Um, happening. And also what it did for me is confirm, I was a little concerned that the original rumor 
from Cointelegraph. I was wondering, you know, this company has been laying off their U.S. staff. And uh, we know from some people internally and uh, cutting costs, The essentially uh, the company's been bleeding cash. So what better way to remain solvent than float a rumor on your platform that the ETF had been approved? So I was a little concerned that that was uh, the initial um, spike that we saw up to that 30,000 level. And fortunately, we've now had some other confirming indications that uh, this is still coming, but it hasn't happened yet. We have got to wait and see for the SEC. And I have an even deeper contrarian idea that we have to leave open uh, that I'll get to in a moment. And uh, that would uh, be a little bit scary, but in the long run, it would be good. So the Bitcoin price roars above 34K as crypto gains confidence. Kathy Wood cashes in. So, you know, her fund, ARK Invest, has been heavily investing in Bitcoin and crypto. So that's uh, good for Kathy. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin rallied over 12% in the last 24 hours and the highest level we've seen in a year since May 2022. So um, obviously, this is all good news for the bulls and we will continue to see this play out but uh let's see the sec declined to challenge its court loss against grayscale that's another bit of positive news and, you know there may be another hiccup along the way but uh, i think the worst is behind us and again the 16.5 lows i believe are in place which i've been saying for a while now so basically uh, anything else we can look at um last monday the u.s appeals court ordered the sec to review the ETF application again. So this is uh, good news for, you know, it, they can no longer sit there and say no for no reason. So Coinbase has been trying to get a regulatory clarity with SEC for years, it seems, and uh, and they haven't been able to get that. So this is important precedent that the courts are now forcing the SEC to basically say yes or no. And if it's a no, why? Right. So uh, probably some back uh, office dealings here, BlackRock, huge company, and uh, here, so Coinbase, as I mentioned, and uh, so Coinbase also filing for a uh, an ETF. So this is all happening, and it's happening fairly quickly. Institutional demand for spot Bitcoin ETF is stronger than ever before. And let's see, I can use my uh, fancy highlighter uh, tool here. So uh, let's do that. Okay, for many institutions, it's not, it's a matter of not if or when. Let me just clear this uh, menu. And yep, so the when, not if, the SEC will prove a Bitcoin ETF. So important to, to keep that in mind. It's just a matter of time. And uh, we'll kind of see the similarities in the market structure. You know, I've been saying for years, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. And, uh, you know, we're seeing the charts tell us what's supposed to happen next. And the news is catching up. And so in phase one of the bull here, we're kind of following the same plan normally that we do and all the other cycles that we've seen in the past. Okay, so let's see uh, There's some advertisements in here. I think that's the bulk of it. And, uh, you know, um, I wonder, though, here's an interesting question. Let's say BlackRock gets approved first. And I wonder, will Kathy Wood sit on the sidelines and not invest in BlackRock because she's waiting for her own ETF? Or will she get in on the action? Mm, it's curious to see. Probably they would buy Bitcoin on the underlying because the prices would have to go up significantly uh, to to allocate for that. And uh, here's why. Uh, there, uh, We could look for news on this. But essentially, the options market, and I posted something like this in our private chat, for those of you in the uh, M3 Active Trader, that the derivatives market are going to have to buy a, a ton of Bitcoin to be to remain delta neutral on any 1% move on the underlying because the derivatives, a lot of the big institutions are playing in the options and the futures markets. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, the, the futures are cash settled, but the uh, options markets are uh, generally uh, they're cat they're, they're going to be settled in Bitcoin. But at any rate, I'll find that article and uh, it, it points to a much higher prices and a lot of buying pressure because of that need for the options markets, at least to remain Delta neutral. That means zero risk. So if there is a big move in the options market, either way, they have to counterbalance that risk in the spot market of Bitcoin. Won't get into the weeds there, but a little bit complicated. Uh, used to run Options University and we would dive way into all that uh, stuff, but um, it's complicated and uh, no need to go down that rabbit hole. Just understanding the concept. 
Uh, so let's see, uh, crypto prices, the green early Tuesday. So we're seeing nice rallies across the board. We'll dive into that a bit, seeing some great breakouts on some coins that have yeah, been beaten down and we've just been waiting for them to break out of that long-term downtrend line. So uh, let's see, uh, ETH rallied up to 1850, so that's good news. GBTC stock ballooned in 8%. Coinbase uh, up 8.5%. So a lot of things we're seeing up 8, 12%, 18, 22%. We'll look at these. And uh, so MicroStrategy, of course, benefiting from that because uh, they're essentially a surrogate for Bitcoin. And so that's a bit uh, hard in the eyes of color there, but 12%. So, you know, MicroStrategy holds so much uh, Bitcoin. They are uh, essentially kind of treated like an ETF until that happens because they are a public company. They're regulated and they own a ton of uh, crypto. Uh, also, uh, in case you hadn't heard, we have talked about it before. MicroStrategy applying to float another $750 million in common stock to, you guessed it, buy Bitcoin. And so that's going to put buy pressure uh, on that. And, um, you know, you, you can believe, better believe that Michael is celebrating right now that he was been vindicated because some people were plotting his demise, although uh, he there was really no risk. They, they borrowed so much debt when prices were very low. They borrowed a lot of debt to buy Bitcoin in um uh, at such low interest levels that it would have taken you know prices sub four thousand dollars for that to get liquidated so they was he was safe they was uh not being uh you know not being too reckless there but people were worried and certainly that was a concern for everybody uh, It would have been a big black mark on the entire industry so here's more news on that uh we've already covered this i don't want to spend too much time on this this is old news but essentially uh this is why things are surging and just kind of skimming the news, uh, let's jump over to, uh, let's see, this is kind of a sidebar. Let me just check Crypto Panic one more time. And, oh, shoot. Uh, I had a feeling. Okay, well, this is this is not, okay, this is the concern. But I was wondering, is it what if this was a, um, a mistake? BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF disappears from the DTC list in the latest update. Uh, let's check that out. That's more important, um, you know, because what we would hate to see is for this to sell back below 32K. Uh, you know, these markets are notorious for fake outs, so we can't pop the champagne just yet. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF disappears from the DTC less than latest update that this is as of today, uh, just 10 minutes ago. So this is breaking and um you know, it might be uh, good to just pop that on the Twitter. <laughs> but uh, it, what does this mean? We've got to kind of wait out, see what's, you know, again, we had to wait for the SEC to confirm. So funds disappearance on the list with T uh, ticker IBTC was widely noticed by the markets. And let's see, uh, uh, the market Monday paved the way for rally. You know, there might be just some manipulation here. Imagine if you got a hold of the clerk at this uh, ID or the DTCC who keys these things in and you say, hey, how'd you like to make an easy $100,000? Uh, you know, um, certainly that would have been easily uh, made up for if uh, you knew that was coming. So that's something to be concerned about. Let's see, DTCC, uh, you know, could be that they pulled it down, though, because people notice they might have thought hey let's just quietly add it and not maybe nobody will notice so i'm thinking i'm leaning more toward that's the case they were just testing it out make sure it would appear kind of give give everyone a little bit of a taste and then they're going to wait for the sec to approve it and then maybe and likely the sec might have said hey you guys uh you know people are getting the wrong idea here we look bad so um, but yeah, that's kind of an interesting uh, development that's just uh, breaking uh, for us here. So um, we'll have to see how that plays out, but it hasn't been selling off too bad. And that is uh, something to be mindful of, even after the, um, you know, the uh, the rumor from Cointelegraph, it's still kind of held a lot of it held up and didn't sell off as much as possible. So yeah, it told me the market was ready to go higher either way. So we'll have to keep an eye on that emerging story. Let's see, uh, will Ethereum benefit from the ongoing ETF buzz? We'll look at the charts. It is uh, benefiting. And of course, Bitcoin is the, uh, you know, all ships rise on the rising tide. That is the rising tide. So we'll see primarily money flowing into Bitcoin. It's good to see that some is also going into alts. So let's see what's here. Um, SEC has acknowledged Grayscale spot Ether ETF filing. 
So that's also interesting to see. This would be conversion of the ETH E into an ETF. So GBTC uh, and uh, Grayscale both trying to convert their uh, their trusts over into uh, ETFs. So that's interesting. That was yesterday. Notice of a filing proposed rule change to list trade shares. So that's uh, that is interesting. Um, good to uh, good to know there. And uh, let's see. We'll take a look at that. Um, ETH definitely did uh, bump bump up higher with the Bitcoin. So we'll see uh, how that plays out. Also, and of course, here's that uh, thread. SEC has acknowledged um, Grayscale spot ETF filing. So we'll just repost that pretty quickly. And let's see. Uh, this person saying until ETH gets over 2,800, I don't know about that. There's not much to be excited about. Either it hits two, 3K times its bear market low. And uh, okay, I don't know, whatever. Everyone has an opinion. What do they say about opinions? Everyone seems to have one. And um, well, we can leave it there. All right, all these ads here. Uh, we Let's see, uh, how do I close this ad down? They're getting more and more insidious. What's the headline here? The... Uh, you can pull it out of the headline. Bitcoin stocks skyrocket, slice past. All right. Well, I uh, expect to see more aggressive ads here also as things move on. That's how these companies monetize their news. So uh, we can also look at places like Daily Hoddle, and that would be the wrong site. That's how you uh, submit editorials. Analyst calls chain link the easiest trade. Okay, we'll look at link also. Uh, we have been watching link in our watch list, and so that's had a recent breakout, and also. Let's see, Solana looking interesting. So these are the ones you probably want to watch. Keep on your watch list. And uh, I would recommend having your dollar cost average worksheets ready and really know what you want to be getting into. So you're not scrambling and having FOMO and chasing the next coin that's up 10 or 20% because that's a recipe for, I won't say disaster, but it's much harder to get out of 20 different coins if the markets turn and we know things do cycle and that's one of the benefits of the software that we use. So, uh, but here, this uh, person strategist saying Chainlink will generate, um, you know, the, the chart says it all. It's starting to break up above this sideways area. We'll look at it in our charts because we've been watching that already. Here I've got Link queued up. And uh, if we look at it on a weekly basis, you know, this sideways congestion here, and this is, we call it gas in the tank. The longer it goes sideways, the longer it consolidates. When it does break above this level, it's got more gas to go much higher. So we're going to look at this too. The weekly basis, weekly charts uh, on at least the trend strength indicator are looking a little bit overbought, but we uh, we kind of ignore that when a bull market's come back in. Um, so we'll look at Chainlink and uh, Comp and a number of the other ones in our watch list. So uh, let's see. I think we can unpack or put the news away. That is for Chainlink. And then Solana, you know, we've got, let's see, uh, Solana and one Ethereum-based altcoin. Let's see who they're talking about here. Uh, let's see. Well, Chainlink, which we already looked at. Already on our watch list. Okay, guys. Well, uh, why don't we kind of dive over into the, the mix and the excitement here. Let's just see anything new happening on this emerging story uh block where i just saw something and where did it go let me get to the top maybe the uh one we already looked at it says something about blackrock uh let's see recursion i think we already unpacked that nothing new yeah so we already saw that all right well let's dive into the charts and if you have any questions um those of you who are here live go ahead and do that and if you're not and you like what you're here you're watching and you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe, turn on the little bell notification thing and uh, to be notified of uh, future videos. So again, you know, this looks bullish. All, there's no two ways around it. Uh, let me jump over onto a different chart with our EMAs and uh, kind of slow down a little bit. So um, let's, let's turn off our indicators for a minute. Now, the only thing is I would expect some sideways action and sell off a little bit. Uh, there's two reasons for that. On our daily Bitcoin, we are getting our sell signal on the trend indicator, the bag of money. Okay, and typically that's a good sign to sell part of your position and wait for a pullback. And often uh, the pullback has the key in the bell. But the the trend, the new trend here, this is when we're going to start relying more on this indicator in particular, because in the bull run, this can really be your friend. And even though you expect Mario from Mario Brothers to come running out here, 
uh, grabbing all the coins. Uh, I was going to look for my Mario uh, image, but we'll do that later. Um, the key signals a trend change is maybe incoming. The bell is your buy signal. And this, this midline here, red is no trend. Green is a trend. And that's a trend higher. So what we use the trend indicator with is to get in at the bell, take some profits on the dollar sign, but take more profits on the bag of money. I always recommend keeping some in the trade in case it keeps pushing higher, but to get back in on the next bell. So if you're new here and we, you know, we haven't really talked about this that much because it hasn't really been uh, the time, but the, so what we're looking for here is a pullback on price. So we have a dual confirmation that prices should pull back in here a little bit. We have that upper Bollinger Band, the three standard deviation Bollinger Band. You saw it push up higher and sold back. Such a good indicator. You know, when you see it even, you know, this, if you see it above that third standard deviation Bollinger Band, good time to take profits, take some profits, and then wait for a pullback to get back below it. Uh, what this blue line is, let's just talk about that. As I sort of mentioned a minute ago, turn off that Bollinger Band to clean up the chart a little bit. But if we, what the blue line is, is a bars pattern from the last bull market. Okay, so this blue right here, maybe I'll go to a weekly just to make it a little bit cleaner. But, um, well, let, let me show you why I, I like this pattern. Because if we take it, uh, move it up a bit, it's very similar. See this? It's very similar to what we saw. These, again, the blue lines here are the same bars from back when we first started to break out right back here very similar early breakout pattern and uh so to recreate that we can just go like this and and move that over so i might not be exact because i did this the other day but let's see it pretty much is the same thing see that so uh look at that isn't that amazing so if we move that down again right on the chart pattern and uh, these so that would indicate hey look we might just so go sideways and slowly drift up higher from here but um you know, and I, that would make sense to me because the uh, exp the exponential moving averages are curving up. You know, even a pullback to this support line, I think, is is um, probably would be good. And and this, you know, at the very least, the midpoint of this vector candle here, that big move higher. That uh, where are the lines? This zone here. So typically, we'll see the midpoint of a big candle move hit. So I would suggest since we had such a move higher. Uh, we'll see something more like this and it's going to be quicker. Uh, but that's what I would I recommend or, or suggest because again, this midpoint of the big candle push up higher generally gets revisited. So that would take us back to around 31 to six. You know, I do want to see 32 K hold and, and it could be a bit higher because the, the actual candle high was up here, but the midpoint of the candle body usually gets retested. So we'll leave that on there and see, and we'll make that, arrow green because uh we want to go higher and green is good green is good green is go all right so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that but what does this signify and where does that take us um and um that this coincides pretty close to yeah you know, what i was suggesting also that golden pocket for the fibonacci between 48k and 50k so if we jump over quickly to our uh, we'll come back and look at the movers if we come back and look at uh the oops this scenario here, um, which also points to 50K. So we've got the Fibonacci retracement from the market cycle high. This is a monthly chart down to the market cycle low. And again, uh, our indicators told us to get in here right in January on this candle. Um, this puts us at right in this little pocket here, 48K to 50K. And that's, if we draw this again, that Fibonacci golden pocket. So market cycle high to the low, move it over between the 618 and six five range so it's uh it's right in this little sliver 48k 50k right in that range now what's uh also interesting is this thing got uh, changed around a bit the my bull flag scenario also coincides with the fibonacci uh projection of of possibly the next market high you know i see a hundred thousand in the next cycle as uh, likely, I think 155K, even 208K, 209K coincides with this bull market uh, or bull flag because we had conflicting signals. Remember, you know, we had this head and shoulders pattern kind of forming 
And now that's been invalidated, the bull flag, this is the flag pull, the flag down, and then the measured move from the break off of the uh, lower range of this up here, if we just move this over, is right at that same level, right around 200,000. So I don't know. I think 200,000 Bitcoin, certainly in the cards, you guys, uh, for the next cycle, if all these ETFs get approved and uh, some of this turmoil in the world gets resolved. Uh, the other side of that, too, is that... um. You know, the money money printers kind of have to come back on. And we know that it, when that happens, it goes into risk on assets like Bitcoin and crypto. So um, a lot of reasons for that. But, uh, you know, the debt here we have been watching, you know, they've got really two options. They can say, um, OK, we tried. The Republic is over. Time for a new regime that we're going to start over, uh, which isn't going to happen. Uh, or they have to turn on the money printers again to basically pay and keep servicing our own debt. And then the pressure would be on to start easing and lowering that interest rate, which would also fuel this rally, right? Because remember, we have that other chart, this the scenarios uh, and to get us to Bitcoin 100,000, and these are some of them, uh, QE money printing, and then also lowering interest rates. So the Fed has signaled that they're gonna start easing and they're done raising rates. So typically, however, uh, that about five or six months after easing, there's another market correction. And so we have to be aware of that. And, and I would suggest taking profits up into these higher FIB levels and in the 48, 49K level, because likely we'll see a uh, rollover and maybe a pullback and another cycle down that is also a resistance area as we saw back in, uh, in January of 2022. But hopefully you guys are following me there on that uh, because... Um, uh, you know, to to when they start lowering interest rates is when things are uh, possibly going to really take off. And that would also allow them to service the U.S. debt a little bit easier because we are. It's really precarious uh, situation right now. If you guys uh, remember the U.S. Uh, debt world, world debt clock, let's just pull it up. Yep, right here. And we can see the national debt clock. It's at usdebtclock.org. Uh, you know, scary stuff. Uh, this is this is spinning like like uh, the wheel on wheel of fortune. This thing is just continuing to go and go or a slot machine, the federal deficit, the official uh, here, the federal spending official, the national debt at 33 trillion and climbing rapidly. Debt per citizen, 100,000, the debt per taxpayer, each of any, every one of us that is a taxpayer. $259,000 is our responsibilities individually. So uh, now somewhere in here, we see the um, interest rate on it. And, um, you know, the higher the interest rate, the more and the faster this thing's going to spin. And so somewhere in here, I hadn't planned on diving into this, but um, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, scary stuff here, even down here in the, the liability per citizen based on uh, things like Social Security, Medicare, U.S. unfunded liabilities. So really, each one of us owes $627,000. How about that? Uh, awesome. And um, but well, the assets, OK, assets on balance are per citizen or higher. But we're getting into the weeds a little bit. What I'm looking for is that interest rate, which uh, would ostensibly uh, would uh, affect, obviously, what our debt costs. Now, we recently had, I heard that that uh, maybe if Ch China was it, we floated a, a debt offering and we weren't having many takers. So, um, you know, there's definitely, we're not out of the woods yet, but we're going to trade on what we see. Nice big bullish candle here on the monthly chart. And so let's see if I jump over uh, on this. Uh, we did have a bit of a bearish ERI. Uh, it has not confirmed on the monthly chart, though. And as we can see, we can stay up at these upper levels in overbought territory for some time. And so we may be, I think we're just really entering a multi-month bull phase. I think that's what we see here. This trend strength indicator, you know, we saw that thing confirm back here in January. Again, the only four times that the ERI has ever flagged on the monthly chart of Bitcoin are worth the market cycle bottoms. Uh, let's see, I had to pull up a different version of Bitcoin to show you that, but let's make sure that uh, that is uh, clear for everybody. Okay, so if we zoom all the way out, here's the chart here that uh, the our early reversal indicator hit in 2012, in the bottom of 2015 and 2019, and then again, January of 2023. 
And then we had that trend strength or the trend indicator, sorry, the TSI trend strength indicator go green. So that's what we were saying. Time to get back in back in January. And uh, that's uh, turned out to be an excellent call. All right. So with that in mind, um, we've got plenty of room to continue higher and stay at higher levels. So look at that beautiful bullish candle there. Uh, really looks good. So good news. Now, 30K resistance. Um, you know, it's still there. I mean, it's worth noting that on the monthly chart, it's still there. We could still sell off. Uh, we've got six days. Let's say we had a big sell off and we come back below 30K on the monthly chart or the weekly chart. Obviously, that's not good news. And you'd want to be very cautious uh, on that. So let's see. Um, somehow I got that on the monthly chart on the weekly. Another way to look at that bull flag here. But it uh, really looks good. You know, we have the weekly chart confirming above. I mean, if we really wanted to redraw this and make sure it was accurate, but it we are seeing a breakout. It's a confirmed breakout. And uh, we're also seeing the MACD starting to turn higher on the weekly, which it was uh, also uh, on the, uh, the monthly. So this is worth noting as well. All right, with that out of the way, uh, let's kind of switch over to uh, what we see on the daily basis and look at some other coins and uh, also with our indicators a little you know, a little bit overbought on the TSI but like I said we could stay there for a while the signal indicator pushing strongly higher so that's good and I like to see these lines break so this certainly can go higher on that that's uh the signal line and of course when these all line up highly accurate and uh we can see uh, lots of follow through uh, on these and so um if this is new for you, by the way, you can find out more about these indicators over at cryptomastery.org. And uh, then we'll dive into our checklist there. But at cryptomastery.org, you can find out more about these proprietary indicators that we use to nail the bottoms and tops in these markets, as you can see here. And uh, so there's also a way to get one month free on a six month membership on subscription so uh don't snooze snooze you lose on these these are uh definitely have been giving us the best signals i've ever used and are catching these bottoms and caught the market tops so uh that's what this class really is for is for free training on how to maneuver those and do some market commentary all right well let's take a look at um, what else is in here we talked about eth uh, eth pushed up nicely you know eth in a nice uh breaking above ostensibly as upward trading channel uh, i'd like the fact that the 21 day and the uh the 50 day emas are crossing up higher here so we see that below us i would expect to see some pullback this topping tail over here probably that upper bollinger band getting hit yeah so you know again that third standard deviation bollinger band uh, so impactful and uh, accurate in terms of when to, people always ask, when do I recommend taking profits? And it's generally always when it gets above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. We see a pullback and we want to see a pullback uh, to support like the 21 and 50 day EMAs. So what do we see at our other indicators here? Let me turn off the uh, Bollinger Band. On the uh, ERI Pro, uh, we don't see any order blocks necessarily. We've got the average true range turning uh, bullish. So let's look at that for a minute. And let's see, uh, I want to just open this up. The other, I've got too many things on the chart here. The average true range here, you see that toggling on and off? Okay, so this is on a daily basis. We're just entering a new entry zone. And let's also do this i'll turn off the uh, downtrending channel for a moment okay to see that a little bit better and um again the atr the average true range when we catch these early and we have confluence uh, they can be the start of a nice bullish run so the last time we had one of significance back here and that uh probably coincided with some of the other indicators but that's up 50 percent and let's see so yeah when these coincide with the tsi over here going bullish and a key and a bell that's the real magic and so we come back over to uh the the uh bullish uh, the checklist the traders checklist which i am working on a new version of by the way we'll have that soon and uh let's just see this this would be a good example of it so you could see the average true range coming in and uh switching the let's see i'm going to do something real quick here live with you guys because i want to get clear uh screenshots but uh we see that entry clearly signaled on here and so that is often a good uh entry zone so you know use these to confirm each other 
And uh, let me just do this one more time because this is going to go right in side of the Trader Success Checklist. Now, if you'd like a copy of the Trader Success Checklist and you're watching this, you can go over to moonstream.io and uh, get a copy of that for free. So I'll show you where that is. Just uh, here, moonstream.io, you have more of our services here that we offer. Uh, you can just scroll, uh, scroll down here, uh, and we'll talk about the Crypto Summit here, which is launching in two days. Everyone, are you excited? Two days, we get to kick this off. Uh, the Trader Success Checklist right here. You can click on that button and go and, uh, and download uh, this uh, file here. It'll look like this, download the checklist. And so here's what it looks like. So um, the this is how you can really magnify your trading. If you're watching and you've seen this before, make sure you're using this. This really helps if we have these signals lining up in confluence. And so uh, let's see, I've got the long trade here. I, I'm gonna download this, then it becomes interactive. So when you land on that page, you can download a copy. And then uh, these things should be uh, working here. I wonder what happened. Uh, let's see, I think I closed the actual PDF, but here, so when we have this and we're, we're going to have clearer images in this in the next version. So is there an ERI showing an arrow up this signal right there? And if you have a TSI above the 20 line, and that's this line here where this is below the 20 line, where it says no here, it says yes. When it gets above the 20 line, that's that confirmation. And then has the signal line turned from red to green. These are different algorithms looking at the markets differently. So when you start seeing a score above three to three out of 20, then that's generally enough for me to enter into a trade. Sometimes just the ERI and TSI, okay? But uh, this is a really helpful for improving your success with these. And then the fourth one is the trend indicator showing a bell. I showed you that a minute ago. It looks like this. That's another confirmation to enter the trade. And so the, uh, the, the trend indicator, this line below is that green. So where was that chart here? We were looking at that. So this green line right here, we want to make sure it's green on the bottom and we have a bell. That's the entry signal. So this is a good time to be practicing and using the uh, checklist for your trades. Is there bullish engulfing candle patterns? So you can start to see the score increase with the more of these that you can check off. Really enhances the profitability and uh, the success of the trade. Okay, so is it above a rising support trend line? Is it above the EMAs like we talked about? Is it above resistance? This is review for all of you live here today, but uh, we'll talk about the volatility index as well. But what we haven't had in here yet, and of course there's our famous rocket indicator that uh, we love, uh, is the uh, average true range. So uh, the ATR will be added to that uh, in here and the radar. Uh, so um, yeah, you'll get the new version of that here shortly. So back to the to the ATR, this is another indicator works on all time frames, and it just kind of tells like where's the average range, and it usually reverts to that uh, at some point. But um, you want to be getting in at an entry point, and not when it's in a red zone. The red zone is typically time to be lightning positions and getting out early, especially when they're lining up with our other indicators. And uh, but so you know, in some cases they don't fully show up. So this ATR is good to layer on on your trading, whether it's one hour, four hour, these work great. Here, I'll just turn off this uh, news article. And yeah, I was looking at this yesterday, huge liquidations, by the way. Um, part of the part of the push, by the way, yesterday, not to sidebar was a massive short squeeze because there were a ton of shorts on the uh, on Bitcoin thinking we'd had lower. You know, there's still that CME gap at 20K. When the money started flowing in, flowing in from somewhere and everywhere, you can bet that the shorts were scrambling and running for the exits and covering their shorts, pushing prices higher. That's why we saw the sell-off. Um, you know, it wasn't that people changed their mind. They were the shorts got creamed and then they got out of their positions. So uh here's a quick look at so I'll just open up the four hour chart, by the way, our new ERI Pro, which also shows a money flow and order blocks. So, um, but I wanted to continue the thought with the ATR, the average true range, and turn that on for a second. So, looks a little differently than uh, I was expecting. What? Uh, let me turn off the Bollinger Bands. And I've got lots of things on this chart here. So, where are my Bollinger Bands? I've got my radar off too. Uh, radar multi-time frame uh, indicator that shows, uh, that shows some, um, here's a Bollinger Band. Can I see that? 
uh, the the indicated on mul multiple time frames. So if they're all red, time to get out. If they're all green, green is go. Time to get in. But here's that ATR on the uh, different time frame. If you're day trading, swing trading, you can get some really good early signals here from the ATR, both exiting signals there. That was an early one they didn't see coming, but it could have prevented this big drop. Now, obviously, they don't always signify pivotal points, but that's where we overlay them with the other indicators when possible. And in this case, we had the ATR. Let me turn off some of these other ones coincide with the vol index so the volatility index right down here went came out of the oversold zone the vol index is great for these one hour four hour time frames where it oscillates from oversold to overbought to oversold overbought so if you are looking for timing your entries you know for swing trading i recommend daily weekly monthly chart patterns but if you are already feeling like bitcoin's going higher or you're coin is going to go higher, then you want to ideally wait for an oscillation down in the vol index range. You can even use trend lines on these seeing lower sort of cycle highs because this signal right here on October 15th coincided with the ATR going into entry zone. So there's multiple ways and layers where you can really magnify your success if you're willing to just turn these on and watch them. Okay, so, you know, and had we gone back here a little lower and expand that out, we also had the the vol index coming out of the overbought zone right here on October uh, 2nd. And shortly thereafter had the exit sign on the ATR and it stayed kind of went up a little bit, but it, it kept it stayed in exit zone. It don't want to be fighting the trend. And then it did drop lower. And then we had this nice bullish move when it went back to entry. So where are we now? We're firmly in entry zone. But had you just been watching those two, you would have caught this massive move right here. So we have this. How, well, it was probably like 15, 20, I won't say 20, 15% or so. Well, it's 25% you know, all the way up here. So where could you have got in using these signals right there on the entry, confirming with the vol index? How do you like that? So uh, I'll leave that on there. I'll be watching for, now here's the key thing too, you guys, you can set alerts on these. All of these indicators you can set alerts on. So I'll put an add alert here on the uh, Bitcoin chart on the, let's see, I wanna make sure that it's on the actual indicators. So that's important here. So I'll hit this, right click, add alert on the ATR entry indicator. And uh, we want it to, to trigger on the, the down red arrow, right? You can have it uh, do it on the, the buy or the sell. So this little down arrow means the next time this thing goes to exit, you'll be alerted. And you may want to say every time, I'm going to say once per bar close so that it stays open-ended. Okay, and uh, here it says open-ended alert. So that's pretty cool. And so sell ATR trailing stop four hour is how you can... You know, put your 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 messages here and say sell. Do I get out here? And I recommend you label these because when markets are moving, you might get lots of alerts triggering at the same time. Is that right? So now we have an alert on that, and every time that that triggers on the four hour chart, we'll be alerted as it falls into our time frame. Uh, let's see. Question from Alex: uh, Which EMA ribbon? There's many EMA ribbons. Uh, in there. And so you can go find any of them. I Generally, when you're looking at these, uh, you can just type in ribbon and the one that has the most downloads. So this is one I use called, actually, that's not it. That's hash ribbons. Uh, you're, uh, you meant the EMA ribbons. Oops. There. Okay. And this one here, the uh, by crypt, you know, they're, they're all fairly the same. There's different color schemes. So there's a different one uh, there. I don't like that one as much. I like this one here. But uh, you can see there's a number of different kinds. So let me get rid of that first one. And but you know, you know, predominantly I just use the 21 and 50 EMA because we start seeing a bunch of noise here. Um, the, the where the ribbons are most effective is kind of where they have this confluence and they tighten. So if I open that up a bit and turn off our uh, ATR. You know, the, well, here's the thing. The ATR would have had you in earlier than the ribbons. So ribbons by nature, our exponential moving averages are lagging indicators. 
Now, it's true when they cross over each other, that's a sign of strength. But the reason we developed our early reversal indicator and our other ones is to get us in earlier. So here on the ribbons, you know, you saw some confluence. It started to get tighter in here and then it crossed. But the move had already really happened there. I think uh, EMA ribbons are better on a daily basis. So what I'm going to do here is turn on the ER, ERI, sorry, the ATR, all these acronyms, uh, get rid of the ribbons, and uh, we can kind of keep an eye on, on that. And so I have alerts set, but what else do we see here? We see a downtrending channel that has now been broken to the upside. Uh, you know, guys, I you know you you guys know I always like to try to find a new upward trend channel once that tide reverses. But uh, really, this breakout is unprecedented because of the just the massive implications of the uh, Bitcoin ETF that everyone's been waiting for. OK, so uh, also nice little Bollinger Band uh, closure on the one hour chart. Uh, this uh, this typically precedes a big move. The So the thing here, though, is we have let's turn on our ERI. So we have the early reversal indicator as um, showing a, a bearish red line here confirming by the trend strength indicator breaking below 80. So I think Bitcoin pulls back here on the hourly basis, maybe down to the 50 hour EMA. But uh, when the Bollinger Bands tighten, usually, you know, that's preceding a bigger move. And uh, we call that 50 day EMA, the, the ice, thick ice. So I think probably this thing goes goes like this. So that's, uh, that's what's setting up here. You have to be like Wayne Gretzky. Where's the puck going to be? Well, a trend strength indicator will come down and it'll bounce again. So, uh, you know, and um, but short term bearish little pullback here fits the narrative on this. We're too far away from this longer term, uh, the four hour EMA. So I would expect to see a pullback and then to go higher another cycle on these uh, on these time frames. All right. Any questions, you guys? All right. Uh, and again, if you wanted to find out how to be in these classes live every week, the Crypto Mastery website. You also get access to these live weekly classes. So that's CryptoMastery.org, our award-winning indicators that we use in all of our services, including our highest level active trader program, which is called uh, M3 Trader. That's over at Moonstream.io slash M3. You can learn about that and our other services uh, just at Moonstream. But um, in M3, it's active trading. Every day I get up updates in the Signal Group. We do a more advanced advanced class on Wednesday and uh, includes the indicators. So if you'd like to have all this wrapped up and some more in-depth uh, training where we look at uh, things like the DXY and the broader market, that's tomorrow's class on Wednesday. So you can find out more, including these bonuses here you won't find anywhere else like a dca investing worksheet a portfolio tracker high probability trade setups and patterns candlestick patterns uh and so much more but really daily access to me inside of the private signal group and these indicators so you can find out more at mainstream.io slash m3 and you get a cool hat here's me hanging with my boy jerome power powell saying buy bitcoin that uh, was at the bitcoin conference and uh but yeah there's a picture of the hat we send out and so um, lots of testimonials there from users and feedback. We've, we've actually stopped adding them and asking for them because we had so many. Uh, one of the best trainings in the industry, in my opinion. And uh, those of you that are here today live, I think would agree. Most of you are in this program. So you can find out more there and all of our other programs at moonstream.io. Uh, you know, guys, forgive the commercials, but um, I want to grow this community because we have so many great people in here that uh, really enjoy working with you guys. And we want to let more people know about it. So let's go back to the charts here. And so any questions on the ATR and the, we looked at the vol index, we've got the radar. So let's look at some coins, shall we? If we open up our watch list, uh, chain link, we talked a little bit about. And again, that ATR though, the clue on the ATR, by the way, is when that candle goes yellow, it's in a reversal or blue. Um, and so the ATR here indicating early, this trend might be changing the entry point right here on Chainlink. Uh, th these have been fairly prescient uh, signals. If all you had was the ATR, could you have done better in these markets, especially when they overlap with the other indicators that we have? So here again, for a confluence, uh, we have, uh, you know, and part of this, look, I, many of you are already using these, but I don't know that you're using them to the maximum effect and have the confidence to pull the trigger when you should be. So hindsight's 2020, we get that. But uh, if we wanted to do a little exercise here and um, 
uh, do the uh, what's it called? Yes, we have to get out of it. We'll, we'll do like we'll do a test here. So we'll do the replay and come back to here. Let's do a little exercise and say that let's say we're going all the way back, take time travel machine back to June of 2023. You know, what would you be doing right here? Uh, I don't know. It looks kind of bearish. Seems like there's a support zone mm, breaking down a little bit of a fake out. A lot of people were stopped out here with their stop losses, you know, but what did we have? I'm doing this on the fly. This is unrehearsed, but we have, <clears throat> so our early reversal indicator sort of was flagging here. There's two versions of it. There's the oscillator and the arrows. So we had the green oscillator saying, Hey, there's money, there's bullish signaling here. And, um, but we didn't yet have it on the trend strength indicator. So I'm going to hit play and see what panned out. Okay. So then we had the ATR. We had the TSI go green. We had a bell here and we had the ATR go green. So I, I missed it by a little bit, but let's say I'll hit buy and uh, let's see what else we see on this. I'm just going to kind of go step by step. We had a bearish ERI and uh, didn't confirm yet though. We see another key in a bell. That means stay in the trade. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And I'm just not even looking at the price. I'm looking at our indicators here. So we're seeing the number sequence. We have a bit of a take profit here, the bag of money. We have a bearish ERI up there. So I'm going to hit sell. I'm going to get out of that trade. And uh, then we're going to let this thing go a little bit more. So I would have you know missed some of the move. But here we see our TSI confirming to the downside. So we start to pull in. And we're oversold now on the trend strength indicator. See that red? We're waiting and watching for it bouncing out of the lower zone and above 20. All right, so let's keep going. What would you do now? What do we have there, you guys? Right there, the early reversal indicator arrow printing. We have the TSI all, starting to turn higher. Sometimes I'll get in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy one but I might buy another one here. So let's see what happens. And I'm, there we have the TSI confirming here. I'll buy another one. So now we're in for two. This is all paper trading or you know now we're back above there. I'm waiting for now the signal line to go green. Okay, you can always add to the positions though uh, if more of these indicators start to follow through. You know, And then let's see what happens here. Start, I don't know, we start seeing the uh, ERI we saw the bearish ERI and the TSI going red here. So it's we're kind of right back at even. That's a judgment call. I probably sell one of them to lighten the risk. Yeah. So that and then it goes all red on the uh, ATR. So we'd sell that. Okay. So let's keep going. Yeah. It can't all be winners. Waiting for another signal here. We've got our TSI going green. ERI again. I'll buy one. Hopefully this is helpful, you guys. And then there we have another early reversal indicator. Okay, but I kind of want to see the TSI go green and above that line. The signal line just went green, so that's one indication to maybe get in, but I'm waiting for my TSI. Boom, TSI goes green. We're still red on the ATR, but I'm going to buy this, and I've got another bell, so I'm going to buy two of those. And sure enough, we start pushing higher. Uh, there we get a bearish ERI. Uh, TSI starting to roll over. Okay, so I would sell. So you kind of get the idea. The signals tell you what to do. And then sure enough, it heads lower. Okay. Are you guys enjoying this? Then we get a bullish ERI. We go green again on the TSI. So we can buy a couple more of those. Getting a little sloppy here, though. But then we have that, that switch over on the ATR. Now we have entry zone. I'm going to buy a couple more. I'm loading up because my indicators are aligning. And look at that. Look how it plays out. Bearish ERI, I'll sell two of those, keep a few. But uh, the ATR is still green. I've oversold on the TSI, goes green again on the TSI, but a bearish ERI. So a little bit conflicting. Boom, blue candle. Looks like it could go higher. I'll buy another one. All right, I'm just going to hit play. You guys can see what happens here. And then look at that. We had a 75% win rate. Okay, so that's how you use these indicators. Uh, you're welcome, Susie. And um, so I encourage you to use that. It's called the replay function. If you guys really want to get good at this, you know, it's it's too hard. And, and now we're, by the way, we're still super bullish now with our ERI Pro. These order blocks, Bitcoin, sorry, Chainlink is going gonna, is gonna to run. I'm going on record. It's just going to run. We have, we're coming out of this consolidation zone. 
or entry on the ATR. I'll turn off the ATR. Uh, I, you know, not financial advice, you guys, but everything is signaling here. Uh, chain link looking good. Uh, a, the this consolidation window here going sideways, sideways, sideways. Uh, we had on the weekly basis too. These time frames are multi. Uh, they're fractal. They work great on the weekly basis. You see this uh, bottom, top, top, bottom, top, bottom. So, you know, obviously we would be waiting for another bearish ERI uh, to, to wait for the next bullish signal. But this is breaking into new highs. The former resistance is now becoming support. We have a big order block here. This is a Joe is a genius. He built that into the new early reversal indicator pro. Uh, reminds me, I need to get that to you guys. So, um, but we're still figuring out the nuances a bit. And, um, you know, so waiting for the next kind of cycle higher, but we're still in a number sequence. We're in a four on the trend. We don't take profits till we get to the bag of money. So that should be four, so three more days of upside. I think Chainlink could certainly push up higher. And the other sell indicator that we use is what? Uh, and the Bollinger Band, the upper Bollinger Band, not this one, this one. So we're at kind of at the top of the three Bollinger Band, three standard deviation. So pullback likely, uh, where would it pull back to? But look at this, we have those, the uh, the 21 and 50 week exponential moving averages. You know, if you don't want to sit here and watch this every day, just trade the weeklies. You get longer term cycles on that. And, um, you know, we almost had the rocket here. It's kind of like it's a it's it, here's the thing. It's it is a rocket. Um, It's got lots of rocket fuel, this green one. The fuse is kind of short. But look at that. It's on the 50 week EMA uh, chain link. You guys uh, mark my words. This could come back and sort of fill backfill this big candle. But when this these EMAs cross, this is huge. So uh, uh, chain link looking very good here, just based on these indicators. And so uh, what else can we look at on our list? We have comp compound there. It's the first time I haven't called it comp USA uh, compound, not looking so good. Rejection, the 21 day, 21 week, 50 week rolling over. I would not be looking bullish on compound yet necessarily, but here's what's interesting. We've got our, the TSI about to go above 20. Again, you can add alerts on these. So uh, what I like to do here is say crossing up the 20 line. That's my my trigger here for, uh, you know, not, not an automatic entry, but that's where I want to go look at it again. TSI entry crossing up 20 on comp weekly. Okay. Uh, that's why I always call it comp USA, you guys, because it says comp USD. And my brain is trained for comp USA, the old computer store. Uh, it tells you how old I am. Uh, so we used to buy computers in stores, people, uh, not on the internet. Uh, but so this is looking somewhat bullish here, higher lows. This is more advanced on the TSI, but I want to wait on that weekly time frame to close above the 20 line. So we're not quite there yet, but chain link, uh, sorry, compound needs to get up a little bit higher. The other line in the sand is above this 80, uh, the $80 range because of this resistance zone. So, you know, these indicators work very well with good old fashioned TA and, uh, so keep that in mind. Let's jump over to some of our other coins that we were looking at here. Actually, this is a, a different uh, watch list. So I'm going to revert back a bit. Ethereum, we did talk about that a bit. So, you know, ETH looking good. ERI and the TSI above 20. Uh, so ERI is bullish here. I like this. Uh, let's turn the ATR on to see, you know, that is still an entry zone. So, I mean, I almost sold my ETH. I kept saying, I think I'm going to sell half because it wasn't looking too strong, but I just felt like the, our indicators were oversold and they would start turning higher again. So I'm bullish on ETH. We have ERI, TSI, both green. And um, by the way, if you're not a member yet, so this is the class where we teach you how to use these. So again, the early reversal indicator is the leader. Our mantra is ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. And when they align, we're we're in, we're green as go. So our signal line about to cross, about to turn green. Again, these are different algorithms entirely. So it's not different ways of looking at the same thing. These two are the ERI arrow is the simple version of the ERI oscillator. This just kind of shows what's going on inside of it a little bit. Our pattern we're watching for. 
bouncing off you know this low level back above 20 and three time periods we also have a keltner band built into it but you don't need to know any of that some of you uh like simple most of you like simple we include this so that you know there's nothing simple or hokey about this uh this is joe our quant engineer partner and uh mad scientist genius uh, is uh the, the developer of all these indicators so there you have it uh, you can turn off the oscillator if you don't want to do that, um, I like to have it on usually, but the simple layout is ERI, TSI here, trend the trend strength indicator, coming below, back above 20, out of the green zone, and, uh, and then the signal, boom. So typically I'll recommend layering into these positions. So if ERI and TSI are green, I'll get into the position. As a signal line turns green, I'll add to it. And then we have, of course, the trend indicator also works on the weekly. Uh, I prefer it more on the daily, but uh, certainly can be uh, highly effective in the bull market uh, on the weekly basis, waiting for it to go green. But look at that, you guys. Can you see that on ETH there? Starting to see a little bit of green. Okay, so that's the first step when we could see a, uh, a trend change. So we should start seeing a key. The key says, hey, there might be a trend change coming when that goes green. Doesn't always line up. There's different things it's looking at, but the bell is the buy signal. So once again, what do we do? We can put an alert on this, say, hey, I want to know when there's a new bell on Ethereum. In fact, I want to, since we're diving into this, um, I on the I'll probably do it on the weekly, but you can do it on the once per bar close if you like to trade ETH. And then we're just going to say ETH weekly, new bell. And then the buy. Um, I, I'm a long-term bull on ETH especially my ER, my IRA, all these acronyms, acronyms, you guys, uh, what is ERA? That's equal rights or something. So my, in my, I like ETH in my IRA. Man, what is the world coming to? Anyway, uh, what, so uh, what else do we want to look at here? Uh, let me go to the daily basis here. You know, I think this pulls back a bit. I can already tell you this is selling off from the upper Bollinger band. How many of you want to bet? You know, this is not hard to see these patterns. And um, there you go. I was right. Kind of came up to that upper Bollinger band and sold off. So uh, you get to the point where you don't even really need these. So what do I expect on ETH? I expect it'll pull back to support down here and then push higher. So that's what I'll be watching for. And uh, dollar cost average back in, you know, lower level. And uh, But we are in a number sequence on the trend. So one, two, three, maybe a pullback. Continue that number sequence. Most often, we want to be taking profits at the bag of money. But when markets are sideways, the trend indicator doesn't work as well. <clears throat> what we want to look for is the bull market. Do we have that check? This little arrow says, hey, we're going into a new up cycle. And uh, so I do like this on a pullback. So basically, if you're watching this <clears throat> and you're wondering when to get in these markets, these are some of the signals that we really like to see. And also, if we layer in some good old-fashioned trend lines, you know, we're breaking above new higher lows and, and higher highs, high, higher low local highs. So my favorite patterns are a breakout and then a pullback, a retest, and then a breakout again. So ideal. If you're watching this video, uh, go ahead and like and uh, subscribe to this. We're trying to grow the uh, subscribers and the viewers. And uh, yeah, and uh, so hopefully that's uh, interesting to you. And let's keep going. Now, in terms of... Um, uh, here's a question, a couple questions here. By the way, if I, I'm not rolling my eyes at you. I've got monitors all around. I'm going to pull this down where I can see it. And uh, let's see, would you use a stop loss? Mike asks for day trading. Um, day trading is tricky business. I would, I would be very, um, I don't recommend day trading in these markets, especially not in Bitcoin, um, unless you really know what you're doing and you can stomach uh, the losses, especially with margin, very dangerous. So the algorithms, understand you're trading against algorithms. And they are far more advanced than the computer that beat the best chess player in the world. So um, if you have the, the market at your back, certainly you can do that. If you're talking like day trading where it's a day or two, that's more of a swing trade. Um, you know, I do recommend stop losses, uh, especially if you are uh, using... There's a couple answers here. I, I don't like stop losses on the exchange because then the AI knows where your liquidation price is. They know where your stop losses are. And uh, when I say knows, it's just 
you know, try to explain AI. Uh, you just have that. That's the best way to explain it. But, um, you know, I uh, absolutely recommend stop losses. You don't want to get wrecked. Preservation of capital is paramount. We've used programs like all tradey and three commas to keep your stop loss orders off of the exchange. So they don't see them. Uh, we don't really get into day trading here, but uh, I did a lot of that uh, in 2022. And, um, you know, there were days I, there was a day I tripled my account and then I gave it all back over the weekend. I was shorting Bitcoin and we we're situations like this. I mean, this is an ideal shorting kind of a pattern. You see price below, kind of slowly dip below the 21 and 50 period. And then you start seeing lower highs. It's sort of rejecting at the 21 and 50 right in here. The sh would be building a short and then boom, you have the drop. And that's where you'd cover it, you know, especially if it came all the way back down here and then go sideways, sideways, sideways. Here's another opportunity to have shorted. But uh, invariably, they get weaker and weaker, and then you get a fake out. And this push here is both shorts getting squeezed and buyers coming in. And then, but uh, had you known, uh, you had you known this was the reject area. Uh, let's just see for fun. Uh, would the ATR have told us that? Not really. Uh, would our ERI have told us that? Yeah, ERI told us that this was a uh, bear. So bearish engulfing candle, the e early reversal indicator saying, hey, this was a reversal point. So shorting that down to here looks easy in hindsight, but um, uh, I mean, for practice, tricky. I, I prefer the odds are in your favor with swing trading. And that's generally a day or two to a week to a month even. Uh, and so, but, you know, look, I've done a fair amount of day trading and uh, my day trading charts would be a one minute, three minute, 15 minute, and then a one hour. Sometimes I have a 30 second chart up, but you have to really know what you're doing. And since you can't really use margin platforms in the U.S. anymore, it's kind of a moot point. Yeah, it really limits the, uh, the opportunities. So, um, you know, um, that's my answer. And, uh, you know. By day trading, that's when you're in and out of trades and using margin. If you're using a Coinbase Gemini, one of these, and kind of getting, you know, buying today, selling tomorrow, I don't really call that day trading. So maybe um, uh, in in that kind of trading, always use stop losses. Yeah. So Susie says, does the number sequence uh, sequence represent additional positive signal to add positions? Uh, let's see. Mike says swing trading. Okay. Yes, I do recommend stop losses on swing trades and preferably using a three commas or the one that's we're starting to learn a little bit more is all tradey that uh, one of our users has been using and likes that. So I will do a class on that here sometime. But anyway, uh, so on Susie's question for the number sequence, uh, additional positive signals. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I mean, it's so if the question is each time it prints another number, does that mean it's stronger? The answer is no. That means it's closer to the likely sell point. Um, you, you know, there have been indicators in the past, like Tom DeMarc's indicators, where they look at number sequences and it's more of a number of periods versus price or strength. So what it tells me is that uh, we're closer to either of one or two things as either we're going to get a sell signal, the bag of money, right? So um, back in here, we had one, uh, or we're going to get another key and a bell. The, the really big caveat and clarification here is I don't, and you guys know this, I haven't been zeroing in on the trend indicator much the last six months because it's been a sideways bearish market. And there are a lot of fake outs like this here, key and a bell, green midline, and then it dropped, you know, so um, that's why. But in the bull market, let's just switch it around. When we start pushing higher and we're in an uptrend, it's a beautiful thing because you can see num multiple sequences play out. So back in January, when our other signals were saying it's time to get in this market anyway, we had, uh, let me just zoom in on that. Okay. This is back again, January of 23. Our early reversal indicator went green on the monthly, right? It showed you that only on the market bottoms. And so we had a key, we had a bell, January 3rd, and then we saw a full number sequence. So when I get into like number four and five, this little one is, is designed to take some profits. The bell is to take some more profits. 
But, uh, you know, oftentimes I've seen it pull back, get another key in a bell and it, it matches up, but not always. So it's good to leave some in the trade, especially in that bull phase. So here we had several bulls uh, key bell cycles. Usually the first one's the strongest. So we go red to green, okay? Key in a bell entry. And I know we had other entry signals, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I don't usually take profits on this, although it, it's it's warranted because on this one, it was a local top that pulled back, right? And then it pushed higher. But let's be honest, it's tricky to time these things like that. So I'm usually, out, I'm in at the bell, sometimes a little earlier if I like the other signals have lined up and my trader checklist score is four or five anyway. Um, yeah, I, I do use that. I mean, mentally I use it, but for you guys using the PDF version of it where you're like, okay, uh, I'm just learning this. Is there an ERI? Yes. And then you're just checking boxes and then you're seeing your score. That's what that's designed for. And again, we're going to have a new version out for you soon. Uh, we're always kind of improving uh, for you guys. All right. So um, anyway, key and a bell, shot up to here, bag of money. We've got a key and another bell went up again. And then so we had two cycles. But if we went from here to there, what is the price equivalent of that? All right. So we had uh, just on that bell sequence, key and the bell right there was a nice little doji price. We got the first bag of money here on January 11th. That was a 14% push higher. And uh, then how far did we go? It looks like it went up to about there, which would have been, I mean, it went as high as 37%. I can't really see it. I'm going to open this up a bit. Uh, it, it triggered at uh, January 21st. Yeah, so, so it nailed the top. So that was a nice 38% uh, run. Okay. Uh, and then the ERI triggered said over here said hey that's time to sell and it sure enough it went down had another bullish eri there so i know it seems like a lot to layer in but it's just like learning a different language you start seeing it once you see it you can't unsee it you guys all right and then we had oh, down here we had the bullish eri this is march march 12th uh, so that was a signal uh, if we're using the checklist so eri check uh, TSI above 20, check. So we got two. And then we have the signal line going green, check. And we have a key and a bell a couple days later. Boom, boom, boom. This was that buy zone. You know, we could layer in the ATR on all this too. ATR went into entry mode. So all of these things. And then what else do we see? Nice little, not a rocket, but it was sitting right on top of the, you know, the 21-day moving average exponential came down and touched the 50. Price went above it. I love this pattern got above the ice, the thin ice and the thick ice, and it shot up another, you know, and it just kept on going. I mean, um, so there's some nuances here, but you can see it starts to make sense. Okay, great. Susie's saying, thanks. It's finally starting to click in my brain. Beautiful. That's the point of this. And so uh, if you're watching this and you know of any traders, if you're watching the replay, please send this to them. We, uh, these tools, we want to get out in more people's hands. And uh, just to show how how good they are. And of course, I uh, love it on the weekly basis for timing tops and bottoms, and especially on the way down, triggered here. Well, the bearish ERI nailed this as a time to get out. And then on the, even the pump back up, this also nailed this as a time to get out. Bearish engulfing at resistance. So these are some more signals here. I want to start, this is a good one to take a photo of for the, uh, the new uh, trade checklist okay so we're going to start showing um bearish signals there also okay forgive me guys uh this is it's part of our ongoing training i'm always looking at how do we make this better and make this uh, more accurate for you guys but look at this weekly basis i, I love the eri is so good on the weekly time frame um, and it called, you know, even before this, I'll go, they called the market bottom in January, sorry, July of 2021 to the day into the week. And on the tops all the way, I called the market cycle top to the exact week and all the way down here, April, 2022 dropped here, boom, dropped here. This one didn't confirm on the uh, TSI. So that was invalidated. I know that because I've looked at it, right? So the way, just so a nuance, if you see an ERI, that's not enough. The confirmation is the trend strength indicator either comes up above 20 like this or below 80 like here. 
Okay, so this bearish ERI was not a signal to follow on the downside. You might have thought it say if you just saw the ERI EMA, I'm sorry, ERI, you might say, okay, well this is bearish. Let's do another uh, replay. I want you guys to see this. Okay, so I'll do the replay again. Uh, let's try that again. Uh, here, uh, I buggered that. Let me do this again. Yes. Okay, so you do this. I'm doing this something. I'm doing something wrong here. Let me try it again. Okay, it automatically starts it on the right side. So let me come back in here. All right. So what we'll do here is um. We're just going to go through this here. So we're going to go like that. Got the bullish ERI. Let me just hit play. So we're pushing up. Uh, and from here, I, I don't know why this is on here, by the way. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Now we push up higher. And then, then we're coming up to the 50-day EMA. Watch for it. Wait for it. And then boom. Oops. Hit the wrong button. I got butterfingers. So we have the bearish ERI here and so if that alone were enough though that would we would be wrong so that's when we say okay what's the tsi doing well the tsi is still green so i wouldn't exit okay so we hit play it keeps going keeps going tsi is still in this green zone then we have then we have it sort of confirming boom well no not quite yet it's on a closing basis so it's still green still above 80 still above 80 and it pushes higher I'm going to put this on 10x speed so we go a little faster. And then, then we have another ARI. And then it confirms here. So see that TSI? So then it confirms, and that's when you would have been getting out. And that's when, finally, it, it rolls over. Uh, it's taking forever to play out, but you see. You see that? So once you learn to uh, to trust the indicators... It really, uh, it really is powerful. All right, let's do this. Uh, we did skip a spot, by the way. We always usually look at the crypto market uh, winners. And so let's see, what do we have moving? Uh, we've got one up 500%. This is going to be, it's not even a market cap coin. So ignore those. We, uh, we can see, well, before we get into this, uh, let's go back to the watch list for Crypto Mastery. To see what we missed here. So Solana, let's, I will get to the hot list last. Solana, uh, my buy trigger has been hit. I'll look at this on Solana. It looks really interesting. It's, uh, we had the ERI back here. We had the TSI go green. We had the signal in the bell. So this was the buy candle for Solana. If you're following the indicators, we're now breaking back above the 21 and 50 day EMA. We have a buy block here. This is very bullish. Uh, I'd want to look at the weekly now. That is weekly, sorry. And so on a weekly time frame, that's bullish on the uh, time, the daily time frame. Look, it still looks very good. It got above the buy, the buy zone, this green zone here, which is zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. Prior support all the way back in July of 2021, there was that market cycle low in 2021 that we we nailed. Came back as support again, flipped over for Solana. Had some trouble here. This was the Sam Bankman Freed event here. Boom, came up. And now that level acted as resistance, resistance, resistance. Now we're back above this. Pay attention. This is important. Solana back above 30 and holding on a weekly basis. It did close above there, above the 50-day EMA. Solana, to me, is a buy here, not making financial advice. But this, you know, um, when evaluating these, also want to look at from current levels, how high could it go on a percentage basis? And we talk a lot about this in the M3 Active Trader class and what the significance is. But this is a 7x back up to old highs. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. That's not the old highs. Solana in 2021, it went out much more. It's just for this on Coinbase. It wasn't on there yet. Uh, but, um, you know, you want to look for to get to old highs. How high could it go? Anyway, I won't go into that. Um, I have a question from Jim says, would this be a good market summary? We had a bullish market at the time of a rumor which caused a big spike, which will likely result in some pullback, but the general market looks like it will continue bullish. Well, I, I mean, Jim, it, it wasn't um, a bullish market necessarily. We were in phase one of the bull, which is kind of the sideways chop. So and you could say, yes, it was bullish market in phase one of the bull, but generally that's sideways, sideways, sideways. 
So I would say, you know, we weren't, we were not confirmed in a bull market when we had that rumor because we were watching this wedge here. And before these two green candles happened, we didn't really know. We knew the wedge would break. We we're seeing the higher lows on this, but I didn't know there was that head and shoulders potential, in which case we could have dropped and gone lower and the, the bear market could have continued, you know. Uh, so the bull phase, the rumor kind of confirmed the bull because it didn't sell off as much. It didn't it didn't sell off to invalidate this. You know, always be looking for what invalidates the thesis. And so this candle, bullish engulfing on a weekly basis, breaking out of the wedge pattern, this was triggered initially by the rumor, but it didn't it didn't sell off. It held. So there was more to the rumor that meets the eye. And then we continued on, which with the rumor continuing. Now it's I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen more of a sell-off because of the what we we unpacked a minute ago that the DTCC or whatever that is, has pulled the BlackRock symbol off. But, you know, I think the fact that it was on there at all signifies it's coming. I think that's what the read is, you know, because it it's not like somebody over there was playing a prank on all of us and decided to type that in. That doesn't happen. So they were likely testing the water. Maybe the SEC said, hey, you know, you're not helping here. We're trying to keep a lid on this. Uh, take it down. You know, but it may, you know, it's kind of like soft opening a, a new business, too. You sort of open the doors. You don't tell anyone. You see how it goes. <laughs> uh, does everyone like the meatloaf or hate the meatloaf? No, okay, we got to fix the meatloaf. And then you don't do your grand opening uh, until, until the meatloaf is good. Uh, and so anyway, you get the idea. Uh, if you can even find a, a restaurant that serves meatloaf anymore. Uh, I don't know how I got on that. I prefer Italian myself, but a uh, nice steak maybe. So this, but the second half of that, the general market looks like it will continue bullish. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, you know, this was that that wedge we were watching. So since it's breaking to the upside, you know, um, here, let's just, I'll, I'll uh, maneuver this a little bit better, but you can see, see that if I hover it, the actual chart comes through look at that. So it hit the, this is kind of funny. It hit the target. Exactly. Guys, this is why these high probability trading patterns that you get inside of the uh, M3 active trader, uh, you know, I do recommend you take screenshots of them and copy paste them onto your charts because they will really help you. We overlaid that and we were we were here basically. We didn't know which way it was going to break, but it broke to the upside. The downside target was exactly as I was saying, 20K. That's where the CME gap is. This is a little bit of luck here. It's, these are not exact, but uh, but look at that. You know, We came right up to the target. The wick on this hit exactly this 35,000, just a hair above it. How cool is that, you guys? You know, and again, if you guys are watching this on the YouTubes, if you want access to these and more, perfect segue, uh, back over to what I was showing you before, M3 Active Trader. You get all these bonuses here, and including the indicators and these free classes every week. You get access to me every day. I do a weekly deep dive on Wednesdays. That's tomorrow. And all these testimonials and reviews you can read. Moonstream.io slash M3. And then, of course, uh, these... Uh, cheat sheets right so high probability candle patterns dca investing worksheet and a video training how to use that a portfolio tracker this i even share and uh, with my coaching clients um, some of you know this one of you this is your homework to use the portfolio tracker start tracking your trades and uh, then these trading patterns so bullish continuation reversal patterns bilateral patterns there you go you got those also uh, video trainings you won't find anywhere else uh, this is in this M3 Active Trader group. It's our highest level for active traders. And uh, you can find out more about our other services, including coaching at moonstream.io. Okay, there. Uh, so so that's uh, that's that's the answer. Uh, and um, so let's keep looking here. And so this is in our watch list. We had Fox Token on our list. I don't remember why. 
and that probably can be moved down. Uh, Rune had a big move. Look at the Rune. We uh, Rune looking good. We ought to see this coming back to life. I, this was my pick in December of 2021 before it went up 160% and then the whole market crashed. But Rune looking really good here. What do I like about this specifically? Look at that crossover on the weekly, the 21 week over the 50 week EMA. Very bullish. Okay. And then what are our indicators share with us? Uh, we have a key and a bell, maybe a little overbought, but that's the thing I was trying to point out. In a bull market, you can stay overbought for a, a long time. So when we start getting into a bull phase or a strong trend, we're not watching the TSI maybe as much because as a sideways market where we have those oscillations. But uh, but look how good the ERI came in here with this big buy block. Okay, we had the bell, we had the buy block here, and sure enough, Boom, boom, boom. This thing's going higher. Rune definitely looking strong. Let's look at some micro caps here. We had Strax, Strax also. We're seeing these patterns across the board, guys. These order blocks, the 21 day crossing the 50 week. So I said the day, but look at your weekly time frames uh, for the longer term trends. You know, it's a little harder to see on the daily time frames. You get whipsawed a bit. Uh, Loom, I don't know why we're watching Loom here. These are not recommendations to buy or sell. Well, Loom had a breakout and it's got a pullback, so it may be one to keep an eye on. UNFI has been in a, a huge tear. Look at this. That's the weekly chart. The daily looks even more impressive, but uh, uh, UNFI, yeah. So, um, really, um, good looking chart, even without our indicators. What's the, the uh, ATR doing here? ATR has been green this whole time, the average true range on the weekly. So uh, I'd be looking for a break over the recent uh, local high here around about $10. So we put alert on there on uh, UNFI. Uh, for some reason, I do some more research on it, you know, but um, definitely has been looking strong. That one landed on our radar from watching this the crypto market uh, market gainers. So that's why we look at those every week. We'll get to that shortly. Just want to finish this thought on our list here. INJ, by the way, this uh, was a recommendation in our M3 Active Trader service and our Retire Rich program. Uh, looking great. Uh, this uh, was back here. We had the early reversal indicator. You know, if you're watching the trade checklist above the 21 day EMA, sorry, we are on the weekly. What's my target for this? Uh, my target, the first target was hit, by the way. First profit target hit that Fibonacci from here to the bottom there. So it did wick up and hit this. So my next target on INJ is $16 and then $20. Uh, you guys can find that in your trade brief uh, inside of the uh, Retire Rich uh, Inner Circle. And if you're not in there, uh, you can find out more at moonstream.io. Uh, but uh, this has 156 potential from where we recommended it back in here. So we uh, nailed that one. Uh, so yeah, that was good. Polygon Maddox had some trouble here. You know, it's it's not dead. It had a nice little base down here. It is uh, actually I was looking at this yesterday for somebody who was shorting Matic. And I said, you know what? This is not the time to short Polygon uh, coming up. Yeah. So this is exactly why the TSI coming up above 20 line. And on the weekly basis, getting a key and a bell. So uh, Matic, I think, that, you know, will participate and start heading higher. Nice base pushing up 21 day, uh, coming up across the 50 day. And in terms of the trend indicator, we're in a key bell sequence on number two. So I think Polygon is just a little late to the party, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll also go now that it's kind of sorted out things moving over on the Solana blockchain. All right, look, we're picking up some steam here. We got XRP. We don't really follow XRP, but this uh, near crossover here is looking good. I would uh, certainly keep an eye on it. It's overbought on the TSI, and so I wouldn't be chasing that here. Uh, Filecoin, another one of our picks, though, from uh, last uh, week, uh, up big in the last few days. So here would probably just hit its upper Bollinger Band. Um, sure enough, you know, hit the upper Bollinger Band, probably going to sell off. But look at this nice buy block on the ERI Pro, uh, all about to cross on the 21 and 50 day EMA. I'm also looking at the weekly. Uh, I like uh, this chart of Filecoin. Um, it's one of our top picks and our services uh, that we've been watching for various reasons I won't go into. If you want to know more, you can join m3 crypto we'll talk all about it and i'm usually updating you guys every day um sorry all the commercials you guys but now is the time to be getting back into crypto make no mistake about it all right quick um forget that must have wound up on our big movers uh h bar uh this is a strange now this little line here this is not an anomaly it's the 50 week 50 how did we get on a monthly chart 
I don't know. But uh, HBAR, I'm not really terribly excited about. Uh, I forget why it's on our radar. Maybe some of you guys were asking about it. Uh, storage um, is one to watch. It's another cloud storage competing AWS type platform like Filecoin. Uh, do your own research. Uh, ARK, Comp, we've already looked at. Looks rare. AVAX, let's look at AVAX. Uh, not much happening here at first glance on AVAX. But TSI starting to peak above 20, um, key in a bell, but I, I just would rather see an ERI on that. I'd like to see the ERI and the TSI um, or getting above the 50-day EMA. So to do that, 50-week or other, I'll just change and put an alert on that so we don't have to watch it every time. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the movers and then we can wrap things up a little bit long on the class today. Wow, it's already 90 minutes in. How did that happen? Uh, and uh, got, oh, by the way, if you haven't already registered for the Future of Crypto Summit over at futureofcryptosummit.com and um, find out more about that because uh, that starts on Thursday. So if you haven't registered already, uh, this has got a great lineup and um, there is a way to um, uh, is a way to. Um, well, they haven't updated these headlines yet uh, to uh, get the um, the recordings. But, um, you know, this is going to be free. It's going to be live. Some great uh, educators here and uh, amazing insights. Mark Yusko, we've got Juan de la Verde, Scott Phillips. Uh, the, every one of these people has some really good alpha uh, to share. Uh, Pirate Chase is how many hours a day from what time till what time Thursday, Saturday, yeah, so um, I'm getting details on that. It's when you register, you should get an email with that, and uh, it will as we go into it. But it's pretty much all day. I mean, you want to block time all day to watch those uh, for the summit. So the summit is a virtual summit. It's three days. If you're not there, you'll miss it. Uh, if you buy the recordings, there's a small fee that goes for the video team, and that's we don't make money on that. So just so you know. All right. Um, hopefully that answers your question there. And yeah, so let's take a quick look at the uh, market movers and anything else that we'd want to see. We've got uh, some of these, a pretty market cap here, something called Mina I'm not familiar with is up big today. Let's see what's going on with that. Okay. Well, I mean, we're, we're seeing pumps across the board. The, uh, you know, um, ERI was back here. TSI broke above 20. I'd say Mina could have some more uh, upside here and certainly pumping out of a, a zone. I'm not sure what they do. A little bit overbought on the TSI there. So it's about all I can tell you about that. But you can find some decent movers on these when they first break out. So P uh, Poly Mesh, I'm not familiar with Poly Mesh. Uh, we can look at what they do, but we don't have a lot of time here. So what do we see? Did it break out? This will sell off back the, above its Bollinger Band. I wouldn't chase this one. And I don't know what they do. I try to stick with the coins that I, I know and I'm familiar with. But uh, there are some gems that come out. So here's one with a $500 million market cap, Conflux. And it's seen some nice buying pressure. What do they do? I have no idea. Uh, it goes up. And uh, so this is not really well. This, the TSI is starting to turn up higher on it. And I don't know, uh, but this pattern's kind of janky. It's a janky chart, and I don't see volume on here, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Kind of strange that the volume is uh, not showing up. So you know, have your don't don't chase things if you don't know what they are. And so I don't see it. Here's Unify. We did we do see that moving on there, and that's good. We looked at uh, Polymath, I believe. Let's see these these low market uh, low market cap ones. I'm less inclined to look at uh, Polymath. I think we just looked at Pepe Coin moving again. I did see that last night that Pepe was trying to move up higher again. So you might want to keep that on your radar. I'm not a big meme coin buyer, but uh, but that's a beautiful chart. Um, so guys, um, hey, uh, on a weekly basis. There's an ERI. There's a TSI about to break here on the on the Pepe. I'm gonna put a crossing up over twenty there on the Pepe coin. I don't know. This thing can run. I mean, these things they 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 don't they don't not good for longevity. But uh, keep an eye on these 
for when they turn because this thing could go again. It could have another run. I don't know. Uh, it's these are high risk. But you see, look at the order blocks. The last time we saw the order blocks print, this thing shot up. So if you guys have a couple hundred dollars, it's so cheap. 0.00000093331. Uh, we've got an EMA cross. We've got E-R-I-T-S-I. Hey, why not throw a couple dollars at it? Where can you buy it? I don't know. You can find out online. But uh, I'll put it on the uh, watch list here on the Pepe uh, coin. What did I do wrong there? I got to do this. Add to the watch list over here to Crypto Mastery. And there you go. Did uh, I want to make sure I got this on a couple of these. Okay for our inner circle members as well. Okay, guys, well, I think that's covered it. We've covered a lot of good ground here. We're at 138, ran a bit long. I've got to get back over on some things for the future crypto summit. Make sure that you sign up for that. Um, Alex, yeah, let me find out about that. Um, it's been so, it's been a whirlwind. And, um, but um, I don't I don't know. We It's it's our partners, it's their fee, their team is doing it. So as far as discounts for that, uh, I can't promise anything, but um, uh, let me, uh, I'll get back to you. Let's see, um, Pepe Coin, Pirate J, I'm out of time, uh, so let's try that next week. I've already kind of got to get we're going, but uh, Binance, Gate, OKX, sure, we can we can maybe look at that tomorrow's class. How about that? All right, uh, sounds good, everybody. Take care, and uh, let's see. I forgot the camera was on the whole time. So uh, anyway, give you guys a wave, a good class this week, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week.